disrupts his. Hey, what's up, my peoples? MGO here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the Cyber Factory Starstorm. So here we are, and there he is. And first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. So right up front here, we have a nice little kind of schematic image of star storm his name is star storm the enemy's ashes paved the way to conquest that is just that's deep that's deep cyber factory bloody 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 on this side cyber factory bloody 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 on the bottom nothing on the top nothing on the back we have a uh, star storm's beautiful mug right there and again cyber factory bloody 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 and that's basically it for the packaging and moving right along here we have star storm and this is cyber factory's take on the bumblebee movie starscream and here he is in his robot mode and i think he looks quite quite good in my opinion anyway i dig him i dig him but let's get it closer yeah, so we can take a look not at his chest at his noggin there's the noggin there it is we can see very nicely done head sculpt, some nice detail there. Okay, some nice silver, some trans clear red there. For the visor, we can we can change that up, but I'll get into that a little bit later. You get some red there on the sides of the head. Overall, pretty good looking head sculpt. Coming to the body, does have nice kind of weathering going on there. Looks a little dingy, a little dirty. He's been in some scraps, been in some battles there. But overall, some nice detail going on. Get some of nice weathering in there. Like a little grimy. A little grimy scream. A grime scream. But yeah. Oh no. Really nicely done in my opinion. Some nice sculpting here. Some nice detail. Some nice paint work. Got a big old feet. And moving up the back. You can see. It is a very... Clean transformation there. Just got his big old wings, but he's supposed to have those big old wings because he's Starscream and he has big old wings. Big old spiky wings too. And these are these are a little bit on the sharp side, so do be careful with those. <laughs> I have poked myself a couple times transforming him, but <laughs> all in all, I think he looks good. You can see a little, uh, the weapons right here also have a little bit of gold in them as well. There's a little bit of like red trim there. But yeah. All in all, I think he looks quite, quite good. Now, articulation-wise, the head is on a ball joint. You have all that wiggly waggly going on. He can look all the way out, do a tall squirrel. Can look down, head can do a full 360. The arms can rotate, can do a full 360. Just get him around the wings. Can move in and out. Come down a little bit here, whoop. We got bicep rotation, we have a double. Jointed elbow for a nice full range of movements. You have wrist rotation. The hands are poseable. Uh, the thumb, if I can get things moving here. The thumb is on a ball joint at the base and a hinge right here. And the index finger is on a hinge at the base and a hinge here. And the other three fingers are just one piece with a hinge at the base and a hinge there. So you can do some evil pointing. You can do that. He does have waist rotation and is a bit limited just due to this stuff. That's in front of his crotchio region, but he has some waist movement. Uh, the legs, they can move forward. About this far. Back, about that far. Outward, you can get about that far. You got thigh rotation. You have a double jointed knee. So you have a nice range of movement there. And the feet, what can they do? Uh, they can't really move up too much, but they can move down. And you have your ankle tiltage as well as some squeaky rotation. And a quick note about Starscream's uh, shoulder pads here. Yes, you can raise them up. They're on a double hinge. So you can have them sitting a little higher if you want to. You can totally do that. I personally don't do that because then you have this gap here and you can you know, kind of see stuff in there. I, I'm not a fan. So me personally, I leave them down. But as always, it's yours. Display it however you wish. Now, as far as accessories go, he does include his arm cannon, which is very similar to uh, Blitzwings. You can see, has a nice blue on it, the reds, the grays, 
Your typical star screamy color scheme. Got some gold in there as well. You got a nice weathering going on. Also, it looks quite good in my opinion. And you can just plug this onto his arm like so for pew pewing and bang banging, pew pewing and bang banging and all of that good stuff right there. And he does also include what seems to be a, uh, a Cybertronian shotgun. But hey, why not? Why not? It's done in like a gunmetal gray with some red. Again, you got some nice weathering going on in there. Some little highlights and shadows and whatnot. Looks quite good. Um, you can store this if you want to. Um, back here on his wings, you can see you have these tabs back here. There are slots here on the sides of the gun. So if you want to, you can uh, just store the gun back there on one of the wings. Hey, thing you can do if you want to do it. Um, another note about the wings too is you can bring these out, bring these in, angle these up. You know, you can pose those a little bit if you want to, but hey, you got storage for your Cybertronian shotgun, but if you want Screamer wielding his weapon, of course he can do so. It is the typical tab in the slot of the palm method of weapon holding. And just get that in there, wrap his fingers around it. He doesn't hold it super securely because the slot is a little shallow, but you can get him holding it well enough. Oops. <laughs> so you kind of weeble wobbled there. Stay. You stay. There we go. There you have your pew pew bang bang, pew pew bang bang, and all of that good stuff right there. And the last thing you get is the display stand. So you're just done. All in black, you got some molded detail in there. Not too much going on. And you get uh, two separate connector pieces here. Um, this one is for the robot mode and this wider one is for the jet mode. So for robot mode, we're using this one and this just slides right on. And this will just go right up in uh, Starscream's nether region right here. <laughs> and you just drop them down onto it. And that will hold him in place, like so. So you got a little display base if you want to use it. And the last thing to show off here in robot mode is the light up feature. That's right, he does have lights in his noggin. Uh, the battery compartment is, uh, is back here. You have to take his head apart to get the batteries in. You take out these two screws, pull the head apart, and the battery compartment's in there. Um, it takes two of these. 379 or SR521 batteries, which are not included. You'll have to get those yourself, but you can get them cheap on Amazon, but yes. Two of these go into his noggin and there's a little button right here on the top of his head. And you push that, whoop, and his eyes will glow a nice bright red. You can see it glows nicely through the visor. Now, if you don't like the visor, you can remove it. And you can see he has beautiful eyes there. We can light him back up. Whoop. There you go. Me personally, this is how I'm going to display him because I'm not too much a fan of the visor. I like this look a lot better. But as always, it's yours. Display it however you wish. But there you go. You got some nice evil star screamy demon eyes. So there you have that. And now for comparison. Here he is with the uh, MPM and Transcraft. Bumblebees, here he is with MPM Megs. It's my knockoff version, but same figure. Here he is with the MPM Bumblebee Prime with the Mechanical Alliance Soundwave with the Zeta Toys Let's swing. He's a bit taller. Just because here he is with the MPM Star Scream. As you can see, his two movie selves. And lastly, but not leastly, here he is with the Studio Series Star Scream. So you can see how that works out. So. There you go. 
So that is basically it for the robot mode, and I think he looks dang good in my opinion. But let's get down to transformation, shall we? Let's. So, first thing we're going to do is we are going to uh, just get the wings situated here. So what we're going to do is we're going to undo this section. You can see the tab there. Just undo it, bring it up, and that will allow you to swing this section in and bring this section down and that will just tab in right there and then you just compress the wing in right there like so and you're all done second verse just like the first untab bring up swing that around bring that in tab that in and then just compress that like so so tail fin section here you can just take and close that up right now if you want to now we pretty much got that situated we can leave that alone for now, so now we're going to work on his arms. You just take the uh, shoulder pad here and just rotate it up. Then you rotate his arm outward at the bicep and just bring the arms up on that double hinge like so. Make sure his fists are balled up like that. And same thing on the other side. Just rotate this up, rotate out, swing this up. And voila, now he just looks like he's flexing. Like he's flexing on us. Here's a little bit better situated here on this side. There we go. So we got that all done. So now we move on to the uh, the belly region here, the bellular region. You just want to untab these sections here, bring them out. You're basically just going to grab this section right here. You're going to pull it forward, and that will undo all of this here. Once you've done that, we need to. Come back up here to these sections. You see little tabs that go right up in here. Just kind of rotate this out to undo those. Like so. That will allow you to kind of lift this up a little bit more. And we can also pull this section forward. Like that. And that will release these bits here. You can swing all this up. At this point now, we can free up the wings. You can see there are tabs. There's a tab that goes in here, and there's also a tab on the inside of this. You can see it that goes right up in there, and that's how it secures in place. So you can just bring these wings out on those multiple hinges and just get them out of the way. For now, um, we can do these pieces now. These red pieces are tabbed in up in here. So just untab that. You have multiple hinges here. They're just going to just unfold. Like so. You can just bring those out and just get things out of the way for now. Just bring that out, bring that out. Just swing that around. Just get that out of the way. Now he really looks like he's flexing. Look at that. He's just, he's just posing on us. Anyway. So now you can bring all of this up right here. This section will just swing out. Flip out this little bit of the nose. This is on a double hinge. This will swing back and this will tab right up into this section here. Just tab that into place. Straighten that out. We can take his head. Just push that down and get that out of the way. And this section here is on a double hinge. Just bring this down, swing it back, and that will tab right up in here. Like so. So you got that all situated. So now what we are going to do is we're going to take the arms, rotate them back. All this will come down. This is on a double hinge here, so you want to rock this down so that way this section right here ends up sitting flush with this. So it's sitting at an angle. Once you do that, you basically just want to kind of hold on to this panel and just rock this out just a little bit so it looks like that. That's what you want to end up with. So same thing on the other side, just rock this down, and then just hold this in place and just rock that out a little bit. So once you do that, hello, how are you? You stay there, you stay down. Um, these little sections here, just rotate around and cover those up. And then again, rotate the arms back and these will swing in, you keep your head down. Swing the arms in, swing the arms in like so. And we'll actually leave these pieces alone for now because we should, we have to move these back around anyway for the next step, so. No point in undoing things we've already done. So we're going to bring these wing sections down so we can rotate this halfway. This little panel here is on a double hinge. Just bring that forward and that will fill in this right here. Then you can just finish rotating that like so. 
So once you've done that, you're going to bring all this down on these multiple hinges, bring all this down and around. This tab will go into the slot here in the shoulder. And I found that it's better if you just kind of uh, bring the forearm down and just hold onto the shoulder so you can get everything lined up in there. And get it all tabbed in all nice like. And there you go. Now you can bring that back up. Second last, just like the first, again, just use all these hinges at your disposal. Get everything positioned just right. Bring that down again, just to help you get some more, uh, help you get a more positive grab here on that tab and slot connection. And whoop, there we go. And again, just work all those hinges. There we go, make sure everything's sitting. Nice and situated like. And at this point now we can rotate the wings around. Actually should have did this before I did this part. My bad. Swing that around. There we go. Really should have did that before we brought these pieces down. It would have been a little bit easier. That's my bad. I did things in the wrong order. But it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. We can still do it. There we go. Rotate the wings around. There we go. All right, so we got that going on once we've done that. These sections here, let me get these out of the way. These will just come down and those will just kind of cover up his hands right there like that. <laughs> they'll get covered up a lot better. This is just covering up a bit of them, but they'll get covered up entirely in a little bit. That's what you do there. So we're basically done with the uh, the front part of the jet. So now we can move on to the back parts. What you're gonna do is you're gonna rotate to the waist, 180, just bring that around like so. And we're just gonna kind of lie this down and we can work on the legs. So what we're going to do here is we're going to untab this section here and open all of this up, bring all of this down. You want to rotate the toe inward like that. You want to open up his toes here on this double hinge and bring that out like that. That will expose that thruster in there. Once you've done that, you want to just rock the foot up into the leg using this double hinge like so. Once you've done that, you can bring this up. There's this little tab that's going to go into the foot eventually, but use the double hinge there, bring that all around, and this tab will go into this slot right in here. And once you have things in position, that tab that goes into the foot just kind of locates itself. So there you go. There you have that done. Second bus, guess what? Just like the first, doing the same thing. So just open that up. Open. We got some squeaky squeakies. Oh, the squeaky squeakies. Oh, the squeaky squeakies. Uh, just open up that toe and then just swing that in like so and just bring all this around and close this up that will tab in right there and there you go and that's all you're doing with the legs as far as the transformation for them goes so then what we're going to do here is the legs are now going to just rotate around like that and rotate around like that and then all this is just going to swing up and under again you want to use all these hinges here at your disposal and just kind of get everything sitting up and under comfortably and you have tabs that will go right up into this panel here so if you have done everything right which hopefully we did everything should just fall right into place. There we go. I got that side in. Open it up and there we go. That side goes in like that. And there are two little tabs up in the shins that will go together as well. Just give that a little bit of a squeeze. Uh, make sure that this little crotch section here is just sitting kind of level with everything. If it's not, you can just rock it back. There you go. That's how you want all of that sitting, like so. There we go. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. It's a good transformation. Nice transformation. So once you've done that, um, 
One more thing, well, two more things we need to do. These sections here are going to swing out, swing out, and then you're gonna bring this together. These bits are just gonna kinda of tuck in between his legs like that. Just bring this all together again, use all those hinges at your disposal, and that will tap together like so. And the last thing we need to do is bring in the, uh, the shotgun here. You have this T-tab right here, which will go right in here. So that will sandwich right in between those two pieces. Let's get that in there. And then close that all back up. Again, use all those hinges. It doesn't hold super securely, but it holds well enough. You see, it, it kind of wiggles a little bit. I mean, it doesn't fall out or anything, but it's not as secure as one would like. But there you go. So we got all that pretty much done. So we need to kind of leave him kind of lying there because now we need to bring in the uh, display base. And now we're going to use this connector piece right here, the wider one. That will slide in. And now Screamy Boy just drops down right onto that, like so. He doesn't actually lock in, he's just sitting in there, so do be careful because you can knock him off of this. But get everything nice and situated, get his wings straightened out. Make sure everything's sitting right, and I believe everything is sitting right. And... There you go. There you have Starscream in his Cybertronian jet mode. And it looks quite good. In my opinion, it looks quite good. The transformation was enjoyable. It's not really a chore. So all in all, please with that. But yeah, there he is in his, uh, in his jet mode. So let's get in closer so we can take a look at those details. You know, let me just take him off the stand. Move them around a little bit more freely here. You can see you got kind of a coppery color there. For the cockpit, a little bit of detail in there. Of course, you got the uh, Cybertronian shotgun just kind of hanging out underneath there. Overall, looks quite good. Again, you got all the nice weathering going on. You can move these panels around a little bit so things are sitting a little bit more flush, but I'm not going to fiddle with it too much just for the sake of time. But yeah, everything comes together quite quite nicely one thing that's a little odd is the way this tail fin sits because it's sitting like very like you know it's not sitting flush with anything and also there's a little curiosity here as you can see there's this bit back here like it looks like it's made for like a pin to go through it like there was another piece here that they just scrapped for whatever reason my guess is maybe they had another piece that kind of came up under here to maybe fill this in and they scrapped it for whatever reason but just left that connector there <laughs> I don't know. That's a little oddity about this figure, but hey, that's fine. Not the end of the world. You can see the uh, quadruple thrusters back there. But all in all, looks quite good in my opinion. There you go. Um, now, articu articulation-wise, I mean, you can move the wings if you want those wings up like that. You can totally do that. Hey, things you can do if you want to do it. If you want to uh, split that tail fin... Um, you can totally do that as well. Open that up. That looks a little bit more dynamic to you. Hey, as always, it's yours. Display it however you wish. Do what you want. But all in all, I think this turned out quite, quite nice. Well, there you go. Now, as far as the arm cannon goes, um, you can plug this onto the jet mode, kinda sorta. This doesn't really work all that well. Um, what's supposed to happen is, you can see this little, little half circle shape right here. It's supposed to drop into this right here. Um, it doesn't really work unless I'm just doing something wrong, but it's supposed to just kinda drop in there. And I mean, it, it holds kind of, whenever I get it to actually get some kind of grip, you can see it sits kind of crooked, so I don't know. And it seems like there is, you can see there's a hole in there, like I guess it's for the, uh, for the tip of the nose to go into, but it's just, I don't know, I just haven't really been able to get this to where it works the way it's supposed to work. It's, I, that's, that's usually the best I can do, and again, it just ends up kind of crooked, so that doesn't really... 
That's not really working out too well for me, unless I'm just doing something just horrifically wrong, which I could very well be. I don't know. I'm not a fan of that, so if that's what you're supposed to do with it. It doesn't work too well. Again, I could just be doing it all wrong, but hey, things you can do if you want to do it. I don't care to do that anyway, because I think this looks fine as is, but hey, if you want to do it, you can do it. So there you have that, and now for comparison, there's really only one we need to do here, and that is with the uh, studio series, Bumblebee Movie Starscream, so you can see how that works out, so, there you go! So there you have Starstorm, and yeah, I really like this figure. I think it's really well done on the jet mode. Looks quite good. The robot mode looks very good. Um, the transformation works well. There's only, there's a little bit of fiddle factor, but nothing to a frustrating degree. I'm um, just going into robot mode, sometimes getting those... Uh, Get, getting the intake pieces kind of tabbed in on the inside can be, a, you know, a little bit of a little bit of fiddling. I would say about 99% enjoyable, 1% fiddle. So, hey, I like that ratio. I'm happy with that. Only real issues I've had with this figure just involve the uh, the weapons. Um, you know, he doesn't hold the uh, the shotgun super securely and the, uh, the arm cannon doesn't plug into the jet mode as securely as it should. Again, I could be doing something wrong there, but it's just not working for me. But all in all, though, I have to say I am very, very pleased with this figure. I think it's really cool. Very solid figure, in my opinion. So there you go. Now, I got this from TF Safari. I'll put a link to their site in the description down below so you can check that out. Of course, for all your other Transformers needs, you can check out BigBadToyStore.com. Also linked in the description down below so you can check that out as well. You can also check out my third-party Transformers playlist for any reviews you may have missed. Also linked in the description down below so you can check that out as well. And I think that's it. So don't forget to check out M Games, check out Love Peace Paranormal, follow me on Twitter, all of that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So there is the Cyber Factory Star Storm. And this is MGo saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old. You grow old because you stop playing. Big geek! Be proud. Boom in your face. Blitzwing! What? Where is Lord Megatron? Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen him. Oh, well in that case, I declare myself the new leader! Now you follow that little yellow bot wherever he's going, get what information you can, and then you destroy him! You're not the boss of me. What? I just... I just declared myself leader. Okay, well I declare myself king of the galaxy. Does that mean I'm now king of the galaxy? Are you, are you really going to be difficult about this now? Look, I'm going to go find that little yellow pest, but not because you told me to. Because I want to. That's right, you obey your leader! You're not my leader.